Hi everyone, so today I want to share with you how I'm getting on with these um, two quill brushes that I have mentioned to you. Now I had a play around with this big one, um, this is the two, um, yesterday and I filmed a video but unfortunately it was very late in the afternoon and the uh, lighting was terrible so it ended up being quite um, um, grainy and so I decided not to post that. This brush, the 10 Zero, I have used quite a few times now and it's become one of my uh, favorite brushes really. It, it feels really good and um, I, I'm not going to do swatches today just because I already swatched them out and I think you can see them so there is really no point of me doing them again. So this is the the size two on this um, page right here so basically oops had some water drop in there um, you can see um, how much water obviously and pigment I could manage to load on this on this brush and also I was not going into water I was just swatching them like that and because there is a lot of water you can see these blooms so that was um, an interesting effect it adds up usually to get these blooms I would need to go if I would use like a regular watercolor brush um, I would need to go back into water and then sort of go in and that would create a bloom in this case it was happening naturally so I guess if, if you like sort of that type of texture it makes it easier um, and then in terms of the fine point for some reason I thought that these quill brushes are designed in such a way that you can do washes and finer details you can do but it's not going to be super fine um, or as fine as I thought it would be it does come to a nice point right there hopefully you can see so, um, but when it comes to obviously um, using this tip, the bristles are holding that big amount of water and pigment, then it means when you start applying it to paper, the water comes out and so it makes um, a thicker line. So that's that. And in terms of this brush for swatches, I kind of laid it sideways as well and that's what I got. So a bit more water. A bit less water obviously as you can see these dry um, parts right here and then for fine point you can't see here at the bottom because I covered it up I didn't like the look of the page so I covered it up but it doesn't come to a very fine point either but it is fun and so I thought what I will do today this is by the way um, these three flowers are done by using um, this big brush right here so here I loaded a lot of pigment and you can see these blooms um, and then here I just watered out the watercolor and made it quite pale and I wanted to see how that would look so yeah um, so today I've got an orchid that just literally opened yesterday I hope I'll be able to get it into frame it's quite big well, it's a small orchid, but it's um, big because it, it has a lot of blooms. I'm trying to get it into... So this is one and two, um, which is not opening yet. So I've got a couple of flowers here that I can see. And today I will attempt to do a very quick and loose painting of these orchids just to get a better feel of this brush because <clears throat> at the minute having just played with it once yesterday predominantly i'm not um too comfortable with it yet um, but i like i said this brush i have used quite a few times and i really really like it i think what i will do is i will use um i'll do an illustration of the orchid very similar in, with two brushes so you can see the difference so unfortunately I cannot get both of the orchid and the illustration in focus so you'll have to um, just watch what I'm doing uh, without seeing the orchid. It would have been fun but I think it's quite hard. So I'm just going to um, 
load the um, brush or just moisten it with water and that takes up a lot of moisture and then um, I just gently touched the watercolor this one is manganese violet someone um, from my subscribers uh, left a comment that they absolutely love this color is their favorite um, purple and so it made me um, think that I maybe should try use it more often and, and discover the beauty of it so thanks for letting me know okay so as you can see there is a nice puddle of water here already just from touching it just because I said like I said it's um oop this is way too much um, water so this is going to be very loose I really like those Japanese watercolorists you know when they um, have that very light touch and they just create a few lines and you can basically guess that it's a flower so you don't have to draw the entire flower I can have a very imaginative kind of look to it let's um mix it with a little bit of I'm going to use this part here so actually you can see as well I'm going to try and mix up this very pale um, like a apricot color and I'm wondering what I need to do for that to get the right Oh, that actually is very close to what I need. It looks a little bit dirty, so I'm just going to go back into the... I mean, there's a huge amount of water in the brush. Okay, well, it's still wet, so... I'm not sure how this will go, but let's just... go with it. I think um, I'm not going like I said I don't want to go into detail I'm just going to leave it you can see how much water there is and how um, a lot more difficult it is to control the water here so uh, it might be that the size of this illustration is too small for this size of the brush because you can see there is just watercolor just sitting here um, and I think I will leave it to dry naturally and maybe actually get some of this excess watercolor off just because it's way too much okay and now i'm going to do the exact same thing with the tan zero and let's see I'm going to water it out because I don't have that much water in this brush. So as you can see it's giving me a lot more variation and I can achieve more detail and more control um, I feel like I have more control over my um, placement of the watercolor so it's less loose for that reason I've got a cup of coffee next to me on this right here 
you can see pointing that word so um, I'm trying to make sure I don't um, put my brush inside there because it happened to me once and it was lovely <laughs> I couldn't finish that um, coffee so just going to mix this color up again and just quite loosely So I guess depending on which um, style you prefer, uh, it's probably um, you then would pick what you like best in terms of the look of it on the size brush. So I think I'll stop here just because I don't want to overcomplicate it. So you can see I added more detail um here because so what happened um basically with this orchid i could achieve this um nice color in the center purely because there wasn't as much water in these purple petals um and therefore by the time i came to do the center the water color here has already started drying and that means the color won't move into these areas whereas with this orchid potentially I can still see most most of it is still glossy so because there was so much water if I would try and do the same thing here in this orchid which I sort of tried what happens is it flows and you don't get to to set the color unless you wait for it to dry completely and that would be an altogether different look because if you dry it completely then obviously it would be glazing so it um, next color would go on top of it and you would see the harsher edges whereas here there is a slight movement the color moves slightly and doesn't give you the harsh edges so like I said it really depends what you're painting the, the style of it what you like what you don't like and or even you know, one day you might be in the mood for something a little bit more loose like this and another day you might want a little bit more contrast and detail. So this video is not long today, so I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful and I hope that, um, you know, uh, those of you that have never tried a quilt brush, I hope it was somewhat informative. Thanks for watching and see you soon.